Drone cameras are everywhere. In the last few years, Hollywood cinematographers and hobbyists have started to use this new technology to capture shots that would be almost impossible to get otherwise. As an example, here's some pretty dramatic drone footage of the Hoover Tower on the Stanford campus. <laughs> Ew, tough crowd. <laughs> Now, what might be less obvious from watching this clip is that it was captured fully autonomously with no human pilot. To get this shot, we used an app that I built with my colleagues in the Stanford Computer Graphics Lab. The app lets you set up shots ahead of time in a virtual environment and then capture them later, fully automatically, on a real drone. So, you don't need to know how to fly a drone at all and you can still get the shots you want. I want to share our design process with you of how we built the app and also how we can apply the underlying ideas more broadly to unlock the enormous creative power of drones. But first, let's take a step back. To understand the thinking that went into our app, we need to understand this photo. The man in the photo is the actor James Dean, and it was taken just before his first movie came out. Eventually, this photo went on to become one of the most iconic images of the 20th century. But part of what makes this photo so special is the technical craftsmanship that went into it. Here, we're seeing the original annotations by Pablo Anirio, the darkroom artist whose job it was to develop the photo. And in these annotations, we see just exquisite attention to detail where he would use a different mixture of chemicals and light in each region of the image to highlight the interesting stuff. I mean, can you imagine putting this much effort into your most recent brunch selfie? <laughs> Some people are nodding, like, uh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> My point here is that photography used to be a highly technical endeavor as well as a creative one. Fast forward to today, we all have access to essentially studio quality photography with a single button click on our phones. For many of us, photography has become non-technical. Photography has been democratized. But drone photography has not, not yet. Here, we're seeing a couple of expert drone pilots as though they're on set capturing footage for a music video. The guy on the left is flying the drone. The guy on the right is controlling the camera, and sometimes this team even works with a third expert whose entire job is just to control the camera's focus. And the whole time that they're doing this, they have to use these remote control helicopter-style joysticks that can be counterintuitive to use. So in some sense, this is the modern equivalent of spending all day in the dark room painstakingly developing an analog photo. So, we saw how hard it was for people to use drones in these demanding creative scenarios. We thought, what if we built a flight planning app specifically for drone cinematography? Can we keep the creativity but remove some of the technical barriers associated with working with drones? It took us a while to wrap our heads around what this meant, but we eventually figured something out. So let me show you what we came up with. The most important thing in our app is the 3D preview window. The idea here is that you set up the shots you want by navigating around in 3D and specifying the still framing that you want at specific times. Then, behind the scenes, our app synthesizes a smooth drone trajectory that connects the still frames and obeys the laws of drone physics. We also have this 2D map where you can get an overview of your shot. And we have these curves that allow you to control the timing of your shot. Now, so far, this interface is very similar to how an animator at Pixar would set up a camera path in a virtual environment. But we had to do a bit of extra stuff to make sure that our user interface works with drone cameras. And that's because drone cameras are physical objects. If I want to get a drone to do anything, I need to apply just the right thrusts on each of the propellers at just the right times. It's like a whole symphony of gas pedals that I need to play just right to get the drone to do what I want. And there's physical limits to the kinds of maneuvers that drones can actually do. So, to account for these limitations, we added these feasibility plots to the side of our app. 
The idea here is that as you're setting up a shot, we compute all the required thrusts and velocities and that kind of thing, and we display them on these plots. We also display the drone's physical limits with these horizontal red lines. So, if you're setting up a shot that exceeds your drone's limits, if you're setting up a shot that is infeasible, then you get visual feedback right away and you can adjust your shot accordingly. Then, at any time during the design process, you can preview what your shot's going to look like. And because we're reasoning, uh, you know, we're going to some length to reason about the physics in this app, these previews tend to be quite accurate. One of the most inspirational takeaways from this project was seeing the shots that total beginners could create. This shot was created by one of our beginner users that had never flown a drone before. We also brought in some super expert users to try out our app, including some guys that get paid to travel around the world and shoot drone videos. But this shot from the total beginner ended up being my favorite. It was almost like the beginner users had never had their brains polluted by how hard it was to fly a drone manually and their creativity could just flow. However, there's a problem. I kind of swept it under the rug so far. So far, in what I showed you, our app just notifies you if your shot is infeasible, but it doesn't do anything to help you make it feasible. So this behavior is kind of like a spell checker that can tell you you're spelling a word wrong, but doesn't offer any suggestions for how to spell it correctly. <laughs> now, of course, in our research paper, we were like, hey, that's not a bug, that's a feature, come on. <laughs> it's more expressive that way. But honestly, I never thought that this was a feature. I always thought that this was a bug. And to see why it's a bug, let's have a look at a typical shot that you might set up in our app. And in this example, I'm color coding the shot according to whether or not it's feasible, where blue is feasible and red is infeasible. So notice that this shot is not even close to feasible. In the middle of the shot, it requires almost three times as much thrust and three times as much speed as our drone can deliver. If you tried to execute this shot on a real drone, its behavior would be unpredictable. It would have to cut corners to try to keep up with where it's supposed to be, and it could easily crash into this building or something else in the environment. In general, adhering to these physical limits is important for safety, so I really wanted our app to deal with these physical limits automatically. The solution we came up with is that the app is going to auto-correct this shot for us, but in a way that respects the drone physics. And under the hood, the app is just looking for opportunities to just slightly bend the timing of the shot to make it less aggressive. So here's where we slightly bend the timing. And notice that the auto-corrected shot is bumping right up against the physical limits, but not going past them. So we're keeping as much of the excitement and pacing of the original shot as possible. This autocorrect feature expands the creative possibilities for beginner users, because it's easy and safe now for beginners to set up shots that are at the physical limits of what their drone can do. This is that same shot I showed on the previous slide after it's been autocorrected by our app. And there's me and a colleague running after the drone. <laughs> <laughs> um, and this is probably the most aggressive drone footage of the Stanford campus that's ever been recorded, and it's worth mentioning that I'm not speeding up the video at all, so I'm just playing it back at 1x speed. So, we've seen how drones can be used to create compelling cinematography, but they can also be used to create compelling virtual worlds for our video games and our VR experiences. And that's because drones can be used to scan our physical world in 3D. To demonstrate this idea, let's try to scan this industrial site that's actually just down the street from here, in, dare I say, a slightly less picturesque part of Berkeley. <laughs> the standard way that you would scan this site with a drone is to fly overhead at a safe height above the scene in kind of a lawnmower shape. And maybe you'd do an extra loop around the scene if you had enough battery. This is what existing uh, flight planning software for 3D scanning would do for you today. And it's also kind of a microcosm for how Google Earth acquires its 3D data. But our approach is going to be a little bit different. 
At first, we're just going to do that quick loop around the scene like this. And based on this quick loop, we're going to reconstruct approximate scene geometry. And for this step, the geometry we reconstruct does not have to be perfect. As you can see here, this geometry is really nothing to write home about, but it turns out that it's going to be really useful in deciding where to fly next. So based on that approximate geometry, we generate this scanning trajectory that's customized and tailor-made for this specific scene. And the idea here is that we're going to try to get into all the nooks and crannies of the scene and try to observe it from as many different views as possible. This will make it easier for our computer vision algorithms to do a more detailed 3D reconstruction. For example, this is the best 3D reconstruction that you can get from doing that standard overhead lawnmower pattern. And this is the 3D reconstruction we get from our method. I'll toggle that one more time. Standard overhead lawnmower, ours. So we're starting to get to the point where our automatically scanned 3D models are good enough to use in a video game or a virtual reality experience. We also repeated this experiment one more time at this barn, and the quality improvements that we observed were even more pronounced. So here's the reconstruction we got from our trajectory, and here's the one we got from that overhead trajectory. I'll toggle that again one more time. Ours, overhead. So in this talk, we've seen a couple of exciting examples of how we can use drones to help us in our creative endeavors. But these are just baby steps. I'm excited about the next generation of drone apps that don't even exist yet. So I'm excited for a journalist to throw a drone in the air and immediately start covering a breaking news story. Or for biologists to start observing wildlife in totally new ways. Or for archaeologists to launch a team of drones to scan some big ancient monument. In other words, I don't just want to unlock the creative power of drones, I want to unlock the creative power of you. Thank you. <laughs>